people deluded i'm back again thank you very much for returning and tuning back in i hope you're all doing well on this monday morning um yeah i've done all the other vids let me show you a lot for context excuse my poor handwriting but that's a vid 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 well no i ain't done that one so i'm lying to you lot. i gotta do that one but the majority of them have been done but i was pre on like social media and stuff and i thought let me make another vid in regards to just some arsenal news the first thing I'm going to talk about is Lewis Campos. I've spoken about him before. You lot saw me say between him and Monchi, they're the one I, ones I want at our club. He's in his 50s, Portuguese, former Portuguese international, I believe. Forgive me if I'm wrong, or he's played at a good level in his playing career. Obviously, it's a bit before my time, just that's based on what I've seen. He's 54 years of age. He's currently Leo's sporting director. The big thing that drew me to Leo, or him, me wanting him to come to our club because of his work at Leo, is because... I'm not sure about now, but statistically, they had the youngest squad in Europe at a time. So with that being said, that shows you, where, rightly or wrongly, whether they've got stars or not, like you've seen with Pepe, who's going to be sold for some big money. That shows you, people, that these lot are good at sourcing youngsters abroad, which, which they, they signed some lad. I, thought, I made a vid about him and I still pre him. I can't remember the names. It's quite poor, but he was actually formerly of Barcelona. That shows you they've got a good scouting network in South America domestically or abroad these are things Arsenal need to get into our game and which we're playing catch up on we're doing it but we're playing catch up on we ain't got 50 60 million for each player we can put that together for, for a certain sort of player but we haven't got that so we've got to do things that give us the edge I think Arsenal have to take a leaf out of the Dortmunds the Leos and clubs like this and keep some of our aspects because we're not these clubs we have more money to spend that's a fact but do these sort of things find find players that or have potential and it's almost a gamble you don't know if they'll kick on but if they do it's a madness um, or players that people are oohing and ahhing about you look at Salah and Mane people can see they're two of the most quality players in the league but there was a time people if you offered Mane around the Premier League teams outside of the top six would have turned up their nose that's when he was at Southampton Salah obviously found his feet at Roma but if you them sort of times there prior to Liverpool people would have acted so Arsenal need to go on that Arsenal need to look where it's impossible, but look where people aren't looking for players. So he can give us that. I mean, he's held a scouting position. And additionally, he's worked at Monaco. He's worked at Lyon, of course. And he's worked as a scout at Madrid. And he's kept a couple of jobs in his homeland in Portugal. So he's probably taken a leaf out of all of these books, people. Obviously, if he's worked at Madrid, he's seen some certain players and knows where to look in the Spanish league and things. And together with Sanye, with Emre, with even the coaches, because they all watch La Liga, they all have contacts in regard. People, it's not always scouts that find players, you know. A coach, look at Calcedo could be watching La Liga one day from, un from first team to under 19s because that's his homeland. Let's just say he sees a good player, I don't know, Betis. He knows the coach at Betis. He hollers him. He relays that information to Reno Embry and it now has legs. Typically, these are how a lot of things work, people. Do you see where I'm going with that? So he's someone that's got a lot of experience. He's someone that's worked with Monaco, teams like Monaco and Leo models where they've got to find players that have to make profit. Obviously, you want players to play for Arsenal and go on to win stuff domestically and give fans something to feel about and be in folklore and stuff. But this is a thing we've got to be real with ourselves, people. We we have to be real with ourselves. This is something he's someone I believe we should look at. And I'm sure you lot believe the same as well, man. He's only 54, so he's got a lot of time ahead of him, man. And the context he's bound to have made with Monaco, with Leo, in his homeland at a number of clubs, are bound to give us some, some sort of edge. Now, we're battling it out with Chelsea, so we don't know. In regards to that, well, moving away from that, do you remember my video in regards to, well, the whole Monchi not coming? I thought that there would be another role on to, in terms of the scouting thing that Miss Lintat is leaving vacant. There would be someone to replace that role in addition to Monchi's arrival, who someone else is. And I do think that's the case. If you look at ZR's Twitter account, ZR underscore 7G1, very good Arsenal account. The Mirror is speculated, allegedly, and this is not the first time I've seen this rumour, so it probably has legs. Steve Marrow, former player, been doing good work in regards to our recruitment. I actually sent him a letter and he didn't reply, but big up Bob Arbor, because he did when he was Arsenal scout, or if he still is. But, um, yeah, allegedly, we're going to give him a promotion. We're going to promote him into Miss Lintat's role. The, the article goes on to say, Marrow will now take on a lead alongside scout Francis Kajigio. Kai, Kai Kajigio, I can never say that name, but Francis, who is also set for a bigger role behind the scenes. The duo will form part of a three-man team with Arsenal, still looking for an external candidate who will become a sporting director. So a three-man team. Obviously, you've got Francis, Marrow and whoever else. They'll obviously collaborate with 
the the external sporting director who will obviously dot the i's cross the t's and make the decisions and hopefully that works well with Una Emre. if Una Emre says he needs xyz the scouting team go and assess that the sporting director sees if it's the best option for the club and if it's something to pursue Sanya and Vinal go and get it done sort of thing so it sounds like a good model and it helps us move away from Arsene Wenger and Sir Alex, Ferguson and Sir Alex Ferguson for United in that they were more than managers clubs need to be able obviously you see the impact of both rightly or wrongly leaving these clubs clubs need to both of them probably could have done more to help us but um respective clubs but you need to see clubs need to be able to move on quickly from a manager and I don't feel in today's day and age clubs can allow managers to be ingrained within a club much like how Ferguson and Fingy were managers are going to become even more dispensable than they actually are now and that with the whole head coach business that's going to become a thing I want it to work but you've also got to remember there's a lot you've also got to remember people there's a lot of with the amount of names I said there's a lot of egos and positions of power these lot are human beings they've all got their own way of looking at things they've all got their own personalities so if you can imagine when there's so many people, if you can imagine Una Emre says he needs a centre-half, this three-man scouting team I've just spoken to all have a different opinion on which centre-half to go with. Vinay and Raul Sanye the same, the sporting directors at Loggerhead. So what happens then? Do you see what I'm saying? When there's so many people, it can work well, but there's going to be a lot of conflict. So we'd probably, you'd pr probably be inclined to think Sanye and Vinay are the ones that, because of the structure, will be the ones with the ultimately most important decision, excluding Stan Kroenke because it's his club but that's something that's something there Obviously, allegedly Arsenal are interested as well in Charlton's midfielder Joe Albri I can never say his name but Aribo I like him he's 22 years of age he's got an eye for goal he's got good technical ability I think his contract is running out in the summer so maybe um, Charlton can't afford to give him the deal they believe he deserves so he looks to be a free agent so there could be a compensation package now at 22 years of age we could only be bringing him in if he's actually going to feature properly at first team level because he's too old to play under 23s why would you want to go from under 23s if you're playing league one football there's there's a number of clubs from the championship interested in him for what it's worth unless Arsenal are legitimately interested in the, they they're kind of telling you like Oxley Chamberlain or Ramsey to a degree when you're playing in these lower leagues that they're gonna give you a chance I personally wouldn't make the move because I wouldn't want to go from obviously I'm not saying it because it's obviously I would be tempted it's Arsenal for God's sake but um you want to play week in, week out. So unless Una Emre, there's, there's legs to this, and Una Emre specifically wants him, or it's a scouting thing where our scouting department is, he's been flagged. You see, you've seen someone with good little metrics, someone who's 22 years of age, someone who's got potential, and someone who's crucially out of contract, meaning we'd only have to pay a nominal comp compensation fee because of his age, he's under 24. That could make it worthwhile, and then he could be loaned out or used within the side, and regardless, sold for a profit. I think he's a decent player, in my opinion, so we'll see how that one goes, man. If I was him, I'd probably join the Championship Club. Um, what other news are there? Allegedly, we want, is it Guermo's um, Walter Kennan, man? I've never seen him, to be fair with you people, but from what I hear, he's a good ball player, centre half. He's only got a £17 million release clause, so again, with Arsenal having to save money and be smart in certain areas, that could be some an avenue we take personally, people. So, yeah. Um, lastly, Denis Suarez. Obviously, you saw how allegedly you know, Emery wants to sell, send him back to Barca because of concerns over his physicality and adjusting to the league. He's put up a tweet. You've obviously seen him saying, working hard, learning and improving. PD, I don't know if he meant PS because I don't know. I, I, I passed English, but I don't know. He said, don't talk about my workouts if you have no idea. So that's a shot at the media team. Obviously, Arsenal as well, it's completely irrelevant, but um, we've been working hard to get new commercial partners. If you go and look at all the pictures, you'll see a Mesut also out there with all the people them in Dubai. So we'll see how that one goes, man. Um, yeah, man, there's not much more to say on that front. Allegedly, Boca Juniors are very tempted and trying to sell, actively trying to sell Pavon to Europe. So I know we've been linked with Pavon a lot. Allegedly, Raul Sanye wanted to bring him into the club. Maybe that's something that has legs and maybe that's an avenue we go down. I'm not too sure, people, but we know we need a winger. We know we need someone with scope to develop to the next level and that could be Pavon. And if they are selling him, if the club are open to selling him or making it public that they want to sell him, that's a from from a negotiating power position of power that can work two ways in that not only Arsenal but Ch Arsenal Chelsea United and just about any top team in Europe are in for him or it could work another I mean that could drive up the prices 
or it could work another way in that you've admitted your a player's up for sale, you've admitted that you more or less don't want him, so well, am I going to give you what you want? Uh, let's negotiate. Let's bring that fee sort of down thing. It's not like I have to force the player to leave and you're open to not selling him, meaning I have to tempt you with even more money to you to leave. This football is more psychological than people realise, but we'll see how that goes, man. I'm, I don't know if it has legs. We've been linked with him for a minute now and I ain't seen nothing, but we'll see. On, on that, though, I'm going to keep it moving. So people, deluded, comment, subscribe and do the rest if you wish.